interview with our alumni, we have someone really of us for that. So we'll go straight to the point and ask, please, for your full name. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm Robert Asabel. I was once a student here. I, I, I left the four walls of this campus in uh, June 1988. That's about 36 years ago, roughly. Yes. Yes, as a, well. as a metallurgical engineer. Okay, interesting. So you graduated 1988. 1988. Please, you read metallurgical engineering, and where did you end up working, if you may ask? Um, luckily for me, all my working life has been in the mining industry. Um, I've done over 26 years working with Angobo Dashanti, Ibiaprem uh, Tapa. So that's where. Those two spent, yes. The Apprim and the Angle. No, the Apprim is the same as. In the Apprim has two, Angle Gold Ashanti has two mine sites in Ghana. One at Obuasi and one in Tapa. So I went at the Tapa branch, Tapa mine. And it's sited at a town called the Apprim. So that's how come we got the name the Apprim. As like Obuasi, yes, so, yes. Yeah. Um, we would like to know if you think that in any way your education here has affected your career, possibly or maybe otherwise. Why not? Without coming out as a metallurgical engineer, I don't see how I could have been employed as a metallurgist. What are some of the practical things you've done there that relate to the theory of which you meant when you were here? Everything. 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 Everything that you need some part of what you have learned to be able to do what uh, any duty that has been given to you. Okay. So when you went school, how many were you like in the class? In a class, in fact, metallurgy. The metallurgy itself was divided into two. I think our our year started was a second batch that produced material science and then extractive metallurgy, extractive metallurgy and then uh, material science. The extractive metallurgy, which I did, we were about thirteen, and then the uh, material science, I think we were about there were about ten or so. So it was size. a small class size. Lecture to student ratio was really good. You we were able to communicate. Sure. Do you yeah. involve yourself in a lot of internships? Yeah, I remember at those times. Those times it was. Though it wasn't very frequent, but once in a while we go on full trips. I remember I went one at uh, Dunkwa. We went to Tapa. Go for us, and then there was a mine in Kibi that we also made a trip there. You made me trip. That's from school. Wow. Yes. That's more than I think most students today can say. <laughs> so over there, how did you get into um, Angobo? Was it were you recruited straight away from school? No. Okay. Um, when I finished school, I did service. Okay. My service. I did my service at a in a classroom. I was posted to Tepa Secondary School. That's where I did my service. So whilst I was at school, I was nosing for jobs. Okay. Luckily for me, I was um, in class. I was made to handle Form Five class. Okay. I taught them maths and additional maths. So in somewhere March. The Form 5 students were preparing for the exam for their mock. After the mock, they prepared for their main exams. So immediately they started the mock. Personally, I was free to do whatever. To do whatever. And I had the blessings of the headmaster then because he knew, he said, You as an engineer, I know you won't stay here. So 
he just gave me the uh, the permission to go and look for job. So I actually started looking for job before I finished the service. And I got job before I finished with my service. So you went scouting for the jobs and then you just chanced on Angry Gold or someone met you. Exactly. For what happened was that, you know, came to school, there were seniors ahead of us. So some of the seniors ahead, ahead of us who were already employed in some of them, we visited them. Charlie, how come? How be? So through that, uh, he said, oh, there, there is employment. They are, they are making some recruitment, recruitment. So through that, I had my job. So that's the power of network. Yes. Do you involve yourself in any other night? Uh, not really. In mm. fact, the point is that working in the mines is so tedious and challenging. Because mines, you work for 12 hours, 12 hour shifts. Okay. And 12 hour shifts, you go in the morning uh, 7 to 7. Wow. So you go in the morning, you leave home by 6, mm. you come home by 8. So by the time you come, you are tired. So there's no room for any any other extra yeah. curricular activities. But are you interested in anything like that right now? Why not? Okay, you're maybe, open to mentorship or maybe, something. Yes, maybe that to help the younger ones as to what uh, they can do, especially with the experience that we have acquired. Yes. yes. Guide them as to what you need to do. Yeah, this is very, very important. In fact, people come out and, I don't know, people come to, they come for interview, you mm-hmm. see the way they present themselves, you realize that they are not prepared. Mm-hmm. Yes. So these are some of the things that, I mean, you need, we need to walk some of you people through. Yes, you need that help. Yes. Someone experience to sit them down and walk them through exactly what's. No, life at school is completely different from life outside school. I mean, in the, in the, in the working world, it's completely different. How different? Completely outside life is is difficult. I mean, it's uh, you know you, you don't get things on a silver platter. Yes, you would. Maybe you have to um, be coached as to what you should do. And you don't expect that everything will be like it's 6 o'clock, you have to wake up and go, go for lectures. No. You must be disciplined yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so there's something you learned while you were So you, these only. things are not, are not yeah. Yeah. thought. Yes. When you go to work, working life is, is slightly different. Somebody might come out maybe with the first class, and because of the first class, he thinks that I mean that is all. That is not all. You can get somebody who had a first class and somebody who had a pass, but your supervisor would prefer the person who had a pass, the yeah, person yeah. who had the first, class. the first class, because at that point you all don't have the skill. You you've all been educated, mm-hmm. but you don't have the skill. So you. The skill is being given to all of you at the same time. So he looks at the two who is more receptive, who can pick so fast. He's a faster learner. Yes. So he says, so look, let me pick this one. It doesn't matter you are the first class. It depends on how smart you are. Thank you so much. We like it. Not take too much of your time. I guess this is for us to know that the importance of being able to at least self learn That's what we are being told. It's really important. Thank you so much. God bless you.